So the last unit motivated the method. The last unit motivated a general method for identifying an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue that is largest in magnitude. The method is called the power method. We start with an arbitrary matrix A, and we're going to assume that it has n eigenvalues. And we're going to assume that lambda 0 is the eigenvalue that is largest in magnitude. It is largest in absolute value. And all of the other ones are smaller. And some of them may be equal. But it's important that the second largest eigenvalue in magnitude is not of the same magnitude as the largest eigenvalue in magnitude. We're going to assume that we have n eigenpairs. And we're going to make a pretty substantial assumption. And that assumption is that the eigenvectors are all linearly independent. Again, just like when we were illustrating how to predict the weather, we start with an initial vector. We'll call it x at time 0. And because the vectors v0 through vn minus 1 are linearly independent and there are n of them, any vector in Rn can be written as a linear combination of them. And we don't know what those coefficients are. Indeed, we don't know what these eigenvectors are. But we do know that they exist, and we do know that, we, that there is a linear combination of those vectors. If we go and we take that first vector, and we hit it on the left with matrix A, we create x at time 1. We know that x0 can be written as a linear combination of these eigenvectors. And we know that then A can be distributed, and we know that it can be inserted everywhere there. Why? Because these are scalars. They can be brought out to the front. And then we know that A times V0 is lambda 0 times V0, and A times V1 is lambda 1 times V1, and so forth, because we chose these vectors to be eigenvectors. So what that means is that this now is the vector x at time 1. If we then create the vector x at time 2 by multiplying that vector on the left by a again, we give it another push, then we get this right here. And just like before, we can bring a inside. And just like before, a times lambda 0 times v0 is the same as lambda 0 times lambda 0 times v0, which is the same as lambda 0 squared times v0. And you can see that the same thing happens for all of the other terms. We can keep doing that, keep hitting that vector and multiplying it by matrix A. What you eventually end up with is vector xk plus 1. So it's not hard to see that this vector then is just gamma 0 times lambda 0 to the k plus first power times v0, and then gamma 1 times lambda 1 to the k plus first power v1, and so forth. And then if you keep doing that, what happens? Well. This should be a zero, since this is the eigenvalue that is largest in magnitude. Eventually, raising that to the kth power, that term is going to dominate all of these other terms, and therefore, eventually, this vector is going to lie in the direction of v zero. Okay, let's try to visualize the power method. Obviously, doing this for a matrix that's n by n would be difficult. So we choose a matrix that's 2 by 2. And this matrix happens to have eigenvalues 1.25 and 1. So the one largest in magnitude is 1.25. As before, we swept out the unit circle with vector x and then observed what values a times x attained. And that's the blue oval. And we start with some vector, and I happen to choose that vector to be of length 1, and we'll call that x0. x0 has some component in the direction of v0, some component in the direction of v1. If we now hit x0 with a, we get x1. Notice that the component in the direction of v0 has now been amplified 
by 1.25. That's what the theory tells us. And the component in the direction of V1 wasn't amplified at all because we chose this matrix to have a smaller eigenvalue that was equal to 1. And you notice that X1 lies more in the direction of V0 than did X0. Do it again, and you lie even more in the direction of V0. And you keep doing that. Now notice that actually the component in the direction of V1 is not at all changing. That, that again is a consequence of the fact that we chose a matrix with eigenvalue equal to 1 for the smaller eigenvalue. But still, the vector is more and more lying in the direction of V0 because the component in the direction of V0 is being amplified because the eigenvalue associated with it is 1.25. And if you keep doing that, you can imagine that eventually two things happen. Relatively speaking, the vector lies in the direction of V0 because relatively speaking, the component in the direction of V1 is insignificant. That's number one. And number two is that you notice that this vector would eventually become infinitely long if you kept doing this. And that is obviously a bad thing. So let's get back to the theory and see how we can fix that. Now what you saw was that these vectors, if the largest eigenvalue in magnitude is greater than one, will keep getting longer and longer and longer. If, on the other hand, the largest eigenvalue in magnitude was less than 1, then it would keep shrinking, and eventually we would end up essentially with a zero vector, and that's no good either. So what we need to do is keep the length of the vector under control. So let's see what happens if we do this. What if instead of only multiplying by a, we also divide by lambda zero? If you work it out, you get this right here. And the first term, if you now look at it, a times v0 would become lambda 0 times v0, but that lambda 0 would get wiped out. So you get would end up with just v0 multiplied by that coefficient. This right here, a times v1 is just lambda 1 times v1, but now you have to divide by lambda 0, and you get this right here, and so forth for all of these terms. And now the important thing is that the first term is now simply gamma 0 times v0. It didn't change. If you then hit it again, again the first term doesn't change. It's simply gamma 0 times v0. The next term, you had this fraction lambda 1 divided by lambda 0. Now you hit it by a times v1. That gives you another lambda 1, but then you divide again by lambda 0. So you get this fraction squared. And the same thing for all of the other terms. Now the important thing is, lambda 0 in magnitude is the largest of all of these. So this fraction here is in magnitude less than 1, as are all of these other fractions, except for in the first term right there. So if you keep doing that, after k plus 1 steps, you end up with that same first term, but now all of the other terms have this raised to the k plus first power. If you now look at this and you say, well, what if k gets really, really large? What we now have is a fraction that's in magnitude less than 1, raised to a power that keeps getting larger and larger. That means that this eventually goes to 0, and as do all of these other terms except for the first one. And when you're all through, you're left with just pointing in the direction of the eigenvector associated with the largest eigenvalue in magnitude. So this here summarizes that. So let's look at our power method again, but now modified so that every time we also divide by lambda zero. So here we have our initial vector again. It's the same one as before. Now we hit it with a, but we also divide by lambda 0. And what you notice is that the component in the direction of v0 is now constant. That's exactly what the theory told us. But the component in the direction of v1 is starting to shrink. Do that again, and again, and again, and again. And little by little, you start pointing more and more in the direction of v0, because the component in the direction of v1 
is disappearing. So there's a fundamental problem with this if we go back here. And that is, in order to now find this eigenvector, we have to know what the eigenvalue is. But a couple of units ago, we said that for matrices of size 5 by 5 and larger, finding those eigenvalues was really, really difficult. So that's no good. The important thing, however, is that we don't care about the length of the eigenvector that we're starting to point towards, nor do we care about the length of the vectors in between. We care that they're not zero. We care that they're not too large, but we don't care exactly what length they are. So why not always renormalize those vectors to have length one? Finding eigenvectors is all about finding a direction. It is not about the length of that vector. So this solves our problem of our vectors getting too long or too short, it also solves a problem of not knowing what the eigenvalue is. So now let's see what happens if we modify our power method so that every time we hit it with A, we also scale our vector back to B of length 1. Here's our initial vector. Hit it with A, divide by its length. You get this, and then this, and then this. Now notice that at every step, our current vector is of length 1. But little by little, you start pointing in the direction of v0. In summary, the power method yields a vector in the direction of the eigenvector associated with the largest in magnitude eigenvector. Actually, there are circumstances where that doesn't happen, but let's not get into those details.